What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Tuesday, March 26th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, oil demand outpaces expectations, testing calculus on peak crude. Oh, great. I'm back in I'm back in college. Now we're doing calculus, Stu. Kill me. Next up, our favorite state. Don't let California politicians gaslight you. Higher gas prices are driven by deliberate policy choices. A nice little op-ed out of the uh um, um, out of the state of California. Next up, Exxon Mobil ahead of schedule in doubling its LNG portfolio, according to executives. We'll finalize the new segment with PetroChina booking record profits as natural gas and fuel demand absolutely soar. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas markets and touch on shells. Uh, and, and touch on Shell's selling its interest in U.S. offshore wind joint venture as company refocuses on oil and gas. Uh, you you can't make this stuff up, folks. Uh, we'll cover all of that in a bag of chips, guys. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley, the uh, editor and purveyor of EnergyNewsBeat.com. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's get rolling over here at peak oil oil demand outpaces expectation testing calculus on peak crude you know we keep going peak crude and uh, everybody's saying are have we reached peak crude in the permian and i think we're not even close um here's one you know we talked about this last week a little bit uh and amir nasir uh C- CEO uh, of Saudi Aramco, we should abandon the f- fantasy of phasing out oil and gas. This is one we didn't talk about was Russell Hardy, the CEO of uh, VTOL, uh, the global oil trader. Uh, he had said the same kind of thing, peak oil and consumption to oil uh, 2030s because of downgraded expectations and the adoption of electric vehicles. Michael, this is just an absolute trend. And then there's also uh, oil governor, uh, governor group expects an increase of 1.4 million barrels per day this year uh, to figure to figure which you you like uh, says the consensus is uh, expectation about 1.5 million in demand but argues there's considerable upside to risks um, what are your thoughts on demand well, I, it's clear that we're probably going to see demand slightly higher than supply. I think that's the current sentiment right now, considering where oil prices are. You've got all of these different, um, you know, oil traders to figure a gun vol. They're all in the same in uh, down the same gun barrel is that, you know, really the fantasy of phasing out oil and gas isn't coming. And we need to make sure that we have enough demand. I see you know, demand somewhere in that 1.3 to 1.5 million range. That's not going to shock anybody. I'm always going to be a little bit higher than what the IEA says. I mean, they still, the IEA in their defense still has demand rising by 1.3 million barrels a day, which was clearly less than yet, uh, last year's 2.2 million. Right. But where's that extra growth going to come from this year? You know, we talked a lot last week about AI and some of that stuff. So I don't know how much crude oil demand you're going to see from the increase of AI. You're going to see probably a lot more nat gas and LNG demand, but there is something to be said about where is that energy going to come from? You know, I think all eyes are going to be on India as they continue to grow, 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 buy cheap Russian oil, um, continue to, to increase. I think, you know, uh, you know, Helen Curry, yeah. she's the chief economist over at Conoco Films, pointed out, you know, really what you need to do is look at where the emerging market growth is going to come from. It's probably going to be yep. India. The other thing is what are EVs going to do depending on that route. So I think there's a lot of different stuff. I'm going to take the over on the IEA's number, though. Trust yep. me. I loved her comment there, her quote. We're looking for another record high in world demand. I liked her comment. All right. Let's roll to the next one here. Uh, let's go to our favorite third world country, California. Don't let California politicians gaslight you. Higher gas prices are driven by deliberate policy 
choices. Um, there's some couple good things in here, and I want to just give a shout out. This came from the OC Register. So, I mean, this is not some kind of uh, yeah. a publication that's just kind of going out there a little bit right wing type thing. So, uh, the bottom line is that California's policy changes are driving the high cost at the pump. And they're continuing to do so. It might be easier to play the blame game, but the facts are the facts. The state of California makes a lot of money off of a gallon of gas uh, more than the oil companies do. <laughs> so, you know, you sit back and take a look. There's there's taxes on the EMP. There's taxes on it being imported in. There's taxes when it's being drilled out of the rainforest. And guess who gets it in the drive through Michael? It's just oh, unbelievable. The consumer gets it through. You know, it's it's it's, it's a who dollar. The a L.A. Times would gaslight their own readers. I'd have never guessed that. And and this one is just amazing. A dollar eighty three a gallon in taxes. <laughs> That's almost dollar, what we pay, that's almost what we were paying in COVID here in Texas. We, uh Trump was a dollar eighty something with that. I just did a, a thing on it and I took another picture uh over the weekend and it was in uh uh Bruce Willis uh death uh or uh, what was the one where he was in uh, uh Nagasaki Tower. There was a picture of gasoline at 74 cents. Die Hard, the first Die Hard, 74 oh, yes. cents. Okay, I, was say, I was like, what are we what are we talking about here? But yes, we, we love oh, that. No, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, here it is. Carb expects cost could increase another 47 cents. So it's almost going to even go up from Die Hard. It was going to be $2. Um, I do love uh, the OC register there. They're one of the few papers down in... Uh, um, Southern California that will, that will actually read. Oh yeah. It's redneck part of California. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, what's next. Hey, let's go to our buddies over there to Exxon Mobil ahead of schedule and doubling LNG portfolio. Holy smokes. Not only is oil and gas not at peak, uh, LNG is really taking off here. Exxon mm. is revamping its LNG strategy amid growing production of the fuel as a wider corporate reorganization that began in 2022. Michael, I, I do want to share with you that in the news feeds that I get, and you know, I get about two hours worth of reading in every day. Yep. The number of bunkering LNG ships is going through the roof. Disney has just taken another cruise uh, ship. You, I would never want to go on a uh, cruise period, but no. you know, you can't go on one because people would think that your Mickey is as they walk up and go Mickey. So, yeah, that was supposed to be funny, by the way. Yeah, you're a great Mickey Mouse. It was, Mouse it was okay. It was okay. So, but LNG is becoming a fuel of choice, and it meets the stringent uh, shipping, and there's more shipping container coming around. Bunker is the infrastructure's there. This is pretty cool. Here's a quote. Our portfolio is never going to look like shells. It's not going to look like totals. We're targeting different aspects of the value chain, he told Reuters. Well, well and what does that specifically mean? It's they're going to be trading their own LNG, not necessarily other people's LNG as an intermediary and getting into the VTOL game and the Trafigura game, the Gunvolt game. They're going to say, we've got enough LNG capacity ourselves to go ahead and pump it all through. So that's the little bit of a difference that they're going to have. You like know, they, they, they could have a larger trading portfolio but that paul clark i think is his name is it paul peter clark exxon senior vice president for global lng um was basically saying that the margin in that business are basically small relative to what it can make off selling its own natural gas which i think is actually interesting thing um you know there's more value in producing liquefying and selling it um yep. where those long term contracts still account for about 80% of the global lmg trade i love this quote Stu. 
He goes, the biggest component in the LNG space is obviously the commercialization of LNG yourself. It's like what Elon said. Anyone could build one rocket to go to Mars one time. It's how do you manufacture thousands of those to keep going, and it's in the manufacturing or the commercialization of an industry, which allows you to scale from zero to large amounts. I love to quote down in here from Clark, and he spells his name C-L-A-R-K-E. The market is expanding, and by 2050, 75% of global energy demand will be in Asia Pacific. So we are really focused in that area. I applaud them on their market strategies as well as long-term growth. Yep, absolutely. What's next? Okay, hey, let's go to our buddies over there at PetroChina Books. Ah, President Xi. Your President Z, record profit as natural gas and fuel demand soar. Um, you know, I think you can recognize the thread. Total revenues for PetroChina slumped by 7% in 2023, and they're up this year. The volumes processed by crude jumped 15.3% year over year. Jet fuel soared by 77%. Production rose 14.4 and diesel output 8.9. Michael, here's where I talked about this a few about a month ago, and that is that the uh, downstream capabilities of uh, China are uh, increasing. Downstream is increasing. Um, and uh, California chowderheads are looking to import from China refined goods. Yeah, it's it's it's. It's pretty crazy. I mean, everybody wants to go get their their oil and gas from somewhere other than the United States. You know, I mean, this just goes to show that, you know, China is going to continue um, to dominate the market from a buying perspective. You know, they're the, the 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 world's top LMG importer. You know, it is interesting to know that that the total revenues did slump by 7 percent, but that's mainly due to international oil and gas prices, which affects their upstream right. unit volumes up. Um, we also saw the same thing happen with with the Chinese National Offshore Oil Company, which saw its net profit in 2023 slip by 12 and a half percent again due to those international prices. So, I mean, That's they're going to keep ticking along over there. But as long as they keep buying, it's it's not really going to matter. No, nope. they're still buying everything they possibly can. Uh, now, what do you think that Russia's uh, the Ukraine attack in Russia? on their refined products uh, is going to do, because that drove oil up, if I remember right today. Uh, there was some things going on. Well, yeah, no, we, we did see oil prices, Bob. We'll go ahead and, and roll over to finance then. But before we do that, we'll quickly pay the bills here, guys. As always, the news and analysis you just heard um, brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job keeping that website up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business, check out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your data and energy news combo. Go ahead and hit the description below. Links to the articles, all of the different timestamps, so you can jump back here, hear what we just talked about with ExxonMobil, or jump ahead and hear what's going on with Shell and the wind business or just go ahead and skip to the end of the show because you like hearing us sign off um, whatever <laughs> floats your boat um, again as always guys check us out www.energynewsbeat.com go ahead and moving over to the finance section guys oil gonna hose and settles higher mainly off russia ordering output cuts and a geopolitical tensions persisting we saw u.s markets um, from an s&p 500 standpoint down three quarters of or uh, down Three tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ also down about three tenths of a percentage point. Big news today is Boeing CEO and entire management team just absolutely gets waxed. And so they'll uh as well they should. 
as well they should. I'm not, you know, I'm flying Airbus as much as I can. Um, we also saw 10 year yields uh, or two year and 10 year yields stay fairly flat about 0.04 percentage points and 0.05 percentage points. Uh, we saw Bitcoin up four percentage points. As I mentioned, crude oil on the WTI side, actually up about 1.64 percentage points, 81.95. Brent oil actually stays fairly flat, 86.87. Again, mainly due to the fact that that Russia um, ordering those uh, output cuts really ironically only affects the WTI price relative to Brent, which is absolutely um, hilarious. Um, so more of a regression than mean to give you guys an idea. Brent's up about 11% this year. WTI up about 12 and a half percentage points. A little bit of a, a spread trade there. Um, Moscow came out today and ordered companies to reduce oil output in the second quarter to meet production targets of 9 million barrels per day by the end of June in line with its pledges, um, uh, via OPEC plus, um, Phil Flynn out of price futures group, Russia is committed to the OPEC cut. They're looking beyond the current supply and demand fundamentals and looking for unity with OPEC plus, um, you know, we saw some crazy stuff happen in, in, in Russia over the weekend um, in, in terms of, of the attacks they had uh, locally. So it's going to be interesting to see from a geopolitical standpoint how they respond that we, we, we have seen some more Russian oil refineries have some of their capacity knocked offline due to continued drone strikes over the weekend. Um, you know, they've got about I mean, you know, this is out of Reuters to about seven percent of their total refining capacity has been cut offline. So. You know, we're we're dancing on a razor's edge here. You know, we also are 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 hoping to adopt a resolution demanding the ceasefire uh there in Palestine um with Israel and Hamas. Who knows where that goes? You know, the the, the oil prices are sort of teetering on that. But you know, good strength early on this Monday. We love to see a good eighty one dollars and 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 nobody's gonna complain about that. Um, especially Shell. Um, uh, great day to announce that they go ahead and sell their interest in U.S. offshore wind joint venture as company refocuses on oil and gas. To give you guys an idea, Shell New Energies uh, Ventures, um, which is you know is, is is a subsidiary Shell New Energies U.S. LLC, they've sold their fifty percent equity share in the South Coast Wind Energy Project to the joint venture partner that they had, Ocean Winds North America. Um, and this was, ironically, this is one of those NIMBYs, Stu, not in my backyard. They're trying to build this power pl- or they're trying to build this proposed offshore wind farm in the U.S. federal mall, uh, waters about 30 miles south of Martha's Vineyard and 33 miles south of Nantucket, Massachusetts. Apparently, they're going to have a uh, the, the goal was to have a capacity of about 2,400 megawatts um, covering around 127,000 acres, which, I mean, is God, when you just think about that, guys, the amount of energy you can the amount of oil that can produce 2400 megawatts does not take up 12 120,000 acres specifically sitting offshore so it's it's pretty unbelievable um the 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 carbon does not ever make it to net zero by the time these things fail out on mean time between failure doesn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I also think that uh, I was going to say I, I also think that uh, you know it, it's it's good for the bird population. They're just trying to keep the bird population down out there. So uh, we absolutely. And I know you don't mind killing the whales, but I do. Uh, Glenn Wright, senior vice president of Shell Energy, says we're grateful to Ocean Winds for their years of partnership with this venture and continue to seek opportunities for more energy with fewer emissions. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely unbelievable. As the door um, closes. <laughs> as the door closes. Hey, Shell's taking it seriously. Their CEO said we're shifting back to oil and gas here's another you know believe him when he says it trust me oh yeah uh they gotta make money somehow absolutely uh what else you need well i i tell you um i our hearts go out for the folks in affected in in russia i i I, nobody should be putting up with terrorism nobody and it's just the uh russian people that are hit by i believe isis has been claiming it now terrorism sucks in all forms consumer always takes it in the shorts whether it's here in the u.s whether it's in russia whether it's in abroad you know and we stand um with the people 
Yeah, so with that, guys, we'll let you get out of here, get back to work, start your Tuesday. Um, appreciate everybody checking us out, World's Greatest uh, Energy News website, energynewsbeat.com. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.